Hi, everybody. It's Diane Needle Living in Barry. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about cashback. So say you do a home inspection and there's issues with the home. If you get the cost of the repair off the purchase price, all it does is reduce your mortgage, but you don't get the cash in your hand to actually do the repair. Now, the problem with cash back is it's considered mortgage fraud. And I'll explain why. So say I bought a house at 600. The bank approved the financing based on 600 as the purchase price and say 20% down. Well, say there was repairs needed for 40,000. Technically, if you took $40,000 off the price, the bank would be giving you a lot less money for a mortgage, right? But you wouldn't have the cash in your hand to fix the problem. So you say, okay, you know what? We're gonna pay 600 for the house. You're gonna give us 40,000 cash back on closing. You can write that in and we used to do it years ago. You're gonna give me 40,000 cash back on closing. So the, the buyer would get the 40,000 to do the repairs. In the eyes of the bank, it's considered mortgage fraud because the house isn't worth 600 then, is it? It's only worth 560. So if you put it in the agreement of purchase and sale and they see that as in the schedule that you're getting 40,000 back, they're not gonna forward you or give all the money on closing that they approved at the 600 purchase price. And it kind of makes sense, right? Because if it needs $40,000 worth to, you know, correct issues, then the house wasn't worth 600. So years ago, there was a whole bunch of schemes where people would say, okay, you know what? Give me $800,000 for the house. I'll give you 50 grand back as a cash back. And then it's in the mortgage, right? So you're actually borrowing money on a house that you're inflating the value, you're ballooning the value, and then giving people cash back. So it's actually illegal to do that. It, it, it's not illegal to necessarily do cash back, but it's also what the lender will approve or, or deal with. So like say it's a thousand dollars cash back because there's something wrong with the electrical and, it, and it's a thousand bucks. Like normally I've done it and there's not a big deal. If it's a small amount and they're putting a big down payment, it's just a minimal amount. You don't get a big freak out. But you know, when you get to the five or the $10,000, you know, the lender could pull the funding at any minute now or just fund you less money, which means you'd have to come up with more, more money down, right? There are side agreements that can be done if there is issues. You can do a little side agreement with with the seller and say, "Hey, I'm I need you know this this this." We get quotes, and you would have to do a side agreement that's kind of actually under the table because if you give it, you can give it to a lawyer. But if you gave it to a bank, there could be issues. There's other agents that will, um, especially in Toronto, do a purchase and then give cash back to the buyer. So they say, you know what? If you use me to do a buy, I'll give you a thousand bucks or two thousand bucks back. Now that what we would we would do as a, as an agent. You would write that you would have to pay income tax on it because it was still part of your income and you would have to um you would write it off as a client gift or something right so is it illegal well in real estate world it is to a degree if you're buying clients um it's a really really fine line and I mean, I don't think anyone goes to jail for it. 
you could probably get a RICO complaint or something if other agents found out. But even then, oh, well, there was something wrong with the house and I wanted the client to get the house. So I gave him the money, you know, to, to fix the repair. Fine line. Now, is it illegal to do it on closing cash back from the buyer and the seller? It's not necessarily illegal, but a lot of lenders won't like they won't do it. They might pull the financing. They might want to now go back and do inspections or appraisals on the house. Like you're opening up a can of worms. So you have to be careful how you deal with these things. Um, and people with a lot of years and experience and had a lot of nonsense happen, learn the hard way and you learn the hard way and then you get smarter on how to deal with things. But be aware of that. It's not as easy as it used to be. You can't just do it. You got to be, you know, you got to be aware of what the laws are and how you can do it. If you like my stuff, hit the like, hit the subscribe, or drop me a comment if you have any questions.